everyone. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to the MCTV Weekly News Update. I'm Janine Starr. And I'm Max Stolf. Tonight we take you around the world covering the latest in international stories from the protests in Iran to the latest way to track your children and women tipping far more than their hats to officers. We've got a lot to cover tonight, so let's t d dive right into our top story. Four people have been charged in the relation to the Westgate Mall attacks in Kenya. Somali terror group Al-Shabaab, a branch of Al-Qaeda, has taken responsibility for the four-day assault that killed nearly 70 people in late September. In addition to the four people accused of committing a terror attack, the number of people involved in the crime remains unknown. Kenyan officials say that up to 15 gunmen may have been part of the attack. The U.S. Navy SEALs recently captured one of Al-Shabaab's most dangerous leaders. The four have been denied bail and their trial is scheduled to begin next week. Anti-American protesters are rallying in Iran to mark the 34th anniversary of the hostage crisis at the U.S. Embassy. Iran celebrates the embassy takeover as an official holiday. Thousands show up outside the former U.S. Embassy every year anniversary to protest against U.S. interference in Iran. In 1979, about 500 Iranian students seized the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. Only six short months ago, there was a tragic bombing at the Boston Marathon. On Sunday in New York City, this thought was sure to run through several people's minds as they took their place at the starting line. This was the first major marathon since the Boston bombings. Every precaution has, was taken by security, including bomb-sniffing dogs, blue police tape the whole way, and metal detectors at the start. The, race, the end of the race was no different. The finish line was crowded by police officers to ensure runners' safety. The increased security was not only for the marathoners, but the crowd as well. After there were three killed and over 200 injured in April, the security was necessary, but many runners said it took away from the experience of the marathon. One marathoner, who has been running since the mid-70s, Dave Obelkovich, said the electrifying experience was dulled because of the amount of people being shooed away from the finish and sidelines. It's tragic about the Boston Marathon, but I guess some security enhancements are necessary. It definitely is, and it's unfortunate that the security takes away from the event at the same time, though. I'm happy everyone had a safe and nice day. Yeah, especially in New York City. They've had enough problems yeah, in the past. Absolutely. Girls in the United States are hitting puberty at a much younger age than their mothers or grandmothers did. Scientists are always looking for reasons why, and one of those seemed to be weight. Here's Martha Shade with today's Health Minute. But doctors say young females who physically mature faster are at higher risk of low self-esteem, depression, promiscuity, and lower grades. Research shows they also have a greater risk of becoming obese, developing hypertension, and suffering from breast, ovarian, and endometrial cancers. What's the cause of early puberty? According to a new study reported in pediatrics, weight has a lot to do with it. Scientists examined more than 1,200 girls who were aged 6 to 8 at the beginning of the study, noting their race or ethnicity along with their breast development as they aged and their weight. On the average, early development began in white, non-Hispanic girls at a little more than 9 and a half years, which was earlier than previously reported in other studies. Black girls started puberty about a year earlier than white girls and Hispanic and Asian females around the same age as whites. But when it came to their weight, overall, the study found body mass index played a bigger role in early puberty than race or ethnicity and that white girls seem to be the most affected. For today's Health Minute, I'm Martha Shade. What better way is there to start your Sunday than turning the clocks back an hour? Recent studies are showing that getting just one hour's extra sleep per night can result in some pretty amazing benefits. Falling back is much easier transition than springing forward. We see the evidence of that in the decline of car accidents and heart ease that comes with getting back into a normal sleeping pattern. The extra hour is said to activate helpful genes, give you a competitive edge, and help you remember things. A plant can grow in a harsh climate of the Andes, once prized by the ancient Incas, has exploded in popularity around the world in recent years, quinoa being toted as the king of all grain. 
It's valued as a superfood for its rich, high nutritional value. Now a company pioneering a new distribution model in Colombia, and fields long abandoned are now growing the versatile crop. As Nick Parker finds, Colombia is rediscovering what was once a national food. It's dubbed a superfood. Quinoa has exploded in popularity in recent years, in strong demand all over the world for its high nutritional content. And this is what it looks like in the wild, being harvested by hand in Colombia. What you have here is a small, beautiful white grains. You have minerals, you have vitamins, you have iron, you have fiber. You have the closest food to mother's milk. Luis Felipe Avea is pioneering efforts to cultivate and manufacture this ancient crop. His company operates across the Andean region, which grows quinoa. He's especially focused on boosting Colombia's low contribution by educating and working with small farmers. We show them the cost of cultivation per hectare. We offer them a price, pre agree with them. With this price and with those costs, they can receive 70% margin. As free trade agreements in Colombia lead to more imports and a decline in some agricultural production, Canoa's versatility makes it a good alternative. Remarkably, this land was left abandoned for 30 years. Now the owners have found a low-cost way to farm it using quinoa. But as you can see in the countryside just behind me, much of the surrounding area is still uncultivated. Avea's company, called Quinoa Factory, has around 90 contracts with small farmers like Jose Florentino Machuca. This is only the first harvest, he says, but taking into account this is organic and uses manual labor, we expect high revenues. Most of the produce comes to factories, like this one. Here, they make the world's first instant quinoa powder, which has won awards in China and the United States. This machine is really our secret. No? Using proprietary technology, they create a product which they say allows the body to absorb 10% more of quinoa's nutrients. They aim to tap a growing industry of dietary supplements. It's a huge business now because the people are looking for something that improves their nutrition without gluten, without soy, without GMOs. We're talking about billions of dollars, around 200 billions of dollars worldwide. They also plan to sell the grain itself, which is in short supply. With China the next big target, feels like this may be just the beginning in Colombia. Nick Parker, CNN, Paipa, Colombia. Well, it sure seems harsh in the Andes, and here at Marist College, the weather is quickly turning colder and colder. Here to give us details is Kelsey Bradley with your weekly highs and lows report. Thanks, Max. Seems like with November came the cold and windy days. It might finally be time to break out the jackets for good and start cranking up the heat. If you went outside yesterday, you might have needed a few more layers than you did last week. In fact, Monday was the coldest morning of the season so far, with a low of 7 degrees in Saranac Lake, New York. There's no avoiding it. Cold weather season is here. High temperatures Wednesday are projected to range from the mid-50s into the mountains to the mid-60s along much of the East Coast. Tomorrow, we can take a little break from the brisk cold and enjoy a midweek warm-up. Another front will swing through the area Thursday into Friday and some rain and wind, but not nearly as severe as last week's 55 mile per hour winds. Gusts will range from 35 to 45 miles per hour. Heading across the globe as the Philippines are recouping from the damaging 67 mile per hour winds and flooding rain resulting from Typhoon Crosa, Vietnam is bracing itself to be the dangerous typhoon's next victim. Crosa is headed in a westerly direction and is predicted to remain over open water, as you can see in the satellite, through the weekend and then curve off to the southwest as it takes aim at Vietnam. But let's get back to what's happening in our neighborhood. As you can see, today was a pretty nice day. Uh, we had an average temperature of 50, a little colder as it's gotten to the night. Very similar to the average. Um, today's record actually is almost 80 degrees and a very low of 19, so I'm glad we didn't have to deal with that. Um, it was a pretty nice sunrise if you were awake to see it, and the sun set pretty early today, but that's about it for today. It was a pretty nice one. Tonight will be both cloudy and cool with a low of 35, so bundle up. The humidity will remain high like today, but you can count on a break from the rough winds tonight. 
For tomorrow, expect a cloudy day, but a refreshing high of 50 degree, 59 degrees. As we head toward the end of the week, expe expect a rainy Thursday and a windy Friday, but don't worry, the sun should come out just in time to start the weekend. On Sunday, there may be a few scattered showers, but it looks as though there will be a sunny and cool start to next week, with steady highs and lows in the 50s. That's all I have for you this week. It might be getting a little bit colder there, colder out there, but Marist College is beautiful in any weather. With your weekly highs and lows report, I'm Kelsey Bradley. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kelsey. Well, at least uh, it will be nice for the weekend. It'll give us some motivation to get through the week. Absolutely. It's been pretty chilly as a little change from the last few weeks, but I think it's a good start to what mm. is winter coming on. Mm. Absolutely. Putting a damper on your lovely outlook for this week's weather, we turn to the recent shooting at the LAX airport. This past Friday, 12.30 Eastern Time, 9.30 local time, an armed gunman shot down its TSA employee at the security checkpoint in Terminal 3 at the airport. The airport shut down and the terminal stayed grounded as passengers were hurried into safer areas. Sadly, this TSA member died at the hospital hours after he arrived. He was the first TSA employee to die in the line of duty over a decade. Even with more websites and apps than ever at traveler's disposal, booking travel during peak holiday periods can still be a headache. Karen Kefu has tips for those still searching for a reasonable Thanksgiving fare in today's Consumer Watch. Those looking for the lowest airfares for Thanksgiving probably missed the window. According to an analysis of last year's bookings by travel website Kayak, the cheapest airfares for Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's Eve were found between September and mid-October. But there may still be time to book a flight at a good price. Travelocity says they expect fares to climb even higher during the week of November 10th. CheapAir.com, which has been tracking holiday airfares, advises that travelers be realistic about what they're going to find. Peak days like the day before Thanksgiving will often be the highest fares, but flying on the holiday, like Thanksgiving morning, can help you find some of the lowest prices. Kayak found the best days for departure on domestic flights are the Monday or Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, or the return Thanksgiving day, Friday, or the following Tuesday, avoiding the weekend rush. Once you find a reasonable holiday fare, CheapAir.com says buy it. That fare probably won't fall and waiting to book could cost you big bucks or leave you grounded without a seat at the dinner table. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kafa. On Monday, Secretary of State John Kerry met with King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia to ease growing tensions between the two nations. The Saudis are known to be in favor of the United States policy in the Middle East. The meeting was held to reassure the Saudi government and people that the U.S. is committed to defending them. Kerry carefully avoided being dragged into the heated debate over whether or not women in the country should be allowed to drive. The Secretary of State made sure to draw on the fact that the differences between the two nations were not impacting their relationship as military allies. Former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi will go on trial Monday over a security crackdown that devastated the Muslim Brotherhood mo movement. The crackdown also raised concerns that the army-backed government was creating a, pol a police state. Morsi was overthrown from the presidency on July 3rd following protests. Those protests led to the expectations of freedom from military power. The generals remain in charge, slowly the, slowing the smooth transition into democracy. A tourist ferry capsized and sank near popular Thai town on Sunday, killing six tourists. The double-decker ferry carrying both Thai and foreign tourists left Long Island the 30-minute trip to resort town of Pad Thai. An engine problem sent the passengers on the first deck rushing to the second floor, causing the ferry to flip and eventually sink. Police say the cause of the accident was likely the result of the ferry operating over its capacity. Police are looking for the driver to further investigate the accident. Social media giant Twitter is looking at how to make a buck on the back of TV advertisers. CNN's Maggie Lake explains. Perfect timing. Just about to get started. From the tense final season of AMC's Breaking Bad, to the heart-pounding suspense of Showtime's Homeland. I can't collect intelligence from behind a desk. Find a way. People glued to the programming on this screen 
are now turning to this screen to tweet about the action live. It could help put Twitter on the path to profitability, a key issue for investors. Twitter has sort of stumbled upon this position as the place people go to have conversations about the things that they're watching on TV. That, in theory at least, presents a really big opportunity for Twitter. During an interview with All Things D, Twitter CEO Dick Costello acknowledged the phenomenon. Over the last few years, we've recognized that um, Twitter is the second screen for TV, and uh, TV is more fun with Twitter. For big events like the Academy Awards, live tweeting can be off the charts. Almost 9 million tweets were sent during the Oscars this year. And during the last Super Bowl, more than 230,000 tweets were sent per minute. A new study says 55% of Americans watching TV now do so with a second screen up and running. Dick Costello says this can be a win-win for Twitter and for TV. In a world in which the broadcasters, I think, um, have traditionally come to think of technology companies as um, um, as competitors, um, we view ourselves as complementary to what those folks are doing. Indeed, a recent issue of Forbes talks about how Twitter will save TV and how TV will save Twitter. But to do so, both mediums must get creative. Twitter can't just plaster lots of banner ads on its screen like Facebook and other sites do. So they've got to find other ways to make money. And they can do that by putting promoted tweets into the stream of content people see. If Twitter can find a way to make money from even a fraction of these tweets, it might easily reach the goal that it set in its IPO roadshow, a 40% profit margin, higher even than Google's. Twitter is far from that goal now, but every live tweet counts. As the second screen gains in popularity, Twitter is hoping to turn 140 characters into cold, hard cash. Maggie Lake, CNN, New York. The days of child leashes may be over thanks to a new gadget hitting the streets. The device, called Tracks, uses GPS technology and Wi-Fi. The watch links an application on a parent's smartphone, and a child can wear the gadget on his, his or her wrist. It also comes with a clip form. If the child has gone missing, there is a red panic button that will automatically call the parent's phone until they answer. The device allows for the parent to communicate with their child and for the child to hear and speak back. AT&T will be the network provider for the watch, but a price range for the product has not yet been released. Well, this is definitely interesting. Um, yeah, I, 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 I always felt that the child leash was just a little degrading, so I think this is a cooler alternative to that. A little bit. I mean, <laughs> I thought it was, I was made fun of for having one of those invisible leashes when I went to Disney World, like a fake. <laughs> yeah. But um, I don't know, I think a watch would be cool because I remember when I was a kid, getting cereal, and then had getting the cool watch out of the box, so. Yeah, it's exciting. India is set to launch its first mission to Mars, and if it's successful, will join an elite group of space explorers. India's orbiter will make the 10-month trip to the red planet on Tuesday. While, there, while, there will, while it will explore the planet's surface features, minerals, and atmosphere. But this is no easy task. Only NASA, the former Soviet Union, and Europeans have been successful in operating probes from Mars. That's because probes can get lost along the way, crash, along, crash on the planet's surface, or lose contact before it can send back any data. Women in Australia are showing their local authorities a brand new form of respect. Legislators passed a law last week mandating women who wear face covering veils to take them off uh, answer, ask, if asked by authorities. The new rules uh, are a result of a recent case where a woman who refused to remove her veil at a traffic stop could not be identified late in a later appeals case overturning it. The law follows a New South Wales policy forcing women to remove their head coverings when signing official documents. For the first time in West Point Military Academy history, a same-sex wedding will, will be held between two men. Larry Kohati and Daniel Lennox, both graduates, were married this past Sunday at the Academy's Cadet Chapel. Kohati used the, to teach the Sunday school at the chapel and always considered West Point a great place for a wedding. Though the two attended the Academy at the same time, they did not meet until afterward. Kohati and Lennox are currently out of the military and pursuing higher education at Harvard University. 
Philippe Cousteau has traveled throughout Sumatra, Indonesia, taking a closer look at wildlife facing extinction. In this segment of his expedition, he visits a sanctuary where exotic babies are being cared for. This is a nursery for tigers. And this baby is only six weeks old, was rejected by its mother because it has an inflammation in its rear leg. It's not very happy right now. It's a fussy baby. These caretakers try to mimic the behavior of mother tigers to make sure that these babies grow and thrive. There are so few of them left that every single tiger counts. And I have to admit, I'm quite jealous of their job. It's not every day you're surrounded by baby Sumatran tiger and orangutans which of course are right behind me. The irony of this place is that we are both the cause for these animals to be here, to be in captivity, and the Sumatran tigers, the elephants, the orangutans, but we can also be the hope for the future for them, as is evidenced by the scientists and veterinarians working here to rehabilitate these animals, to provide a good home for them, and of course, all the people fighting to keep their homes in the wild safe and protected from further deforestation. We're both the hope, we, we can both be the problem, but also the solution. Well, it's pandemonium all over again. These 14 giant panda cubs celebrated their 100-day birthday over the weekend at a panda research center in China. In Chinese tradition, babies and their families celebrate 100 days after birth to wish 100 days after birth to wish the baby a long and happy life. Of course, pandas grow a lot, a lot faster than people. Some of these cubs are now more than 20 times their birth weight. Many of the world's zoo pandas come from this research center, including those at the National Zoo in Washington and Zoo Atlanta. What piece of the Titanic would you pay the most for? Surprisingly, the public chose the violin that was playing on the board as it sank. The instrument sold in a British auction Saturday for over $1.7 million. This is the highest paid purchase for any piece of the Titanic. Wow. I don't know about you, Max, but I would want that blue diamond. Yeah, well, I was, oh, oh the blue diamond. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's funny. I always love hearing news things about the Titanic because as a kid, I was obsessed with it. Um, I, I loved everything about it. And so um, my family actually bought me uh, original newspapers from 1914, wow. a couple of days after the Titanic sank. So I have a couple of those, which is always cool. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Yep. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have today. I'm Max Stolf. And I'm Janine Starr. Be sure to tune in next week to the live news show, November 12th. Thanks for stopping by.